I love to work at nothing all day. And I'm about to take care of some business. Hey, you having a good day? You know, show more people, right? All right, so the question becomes, you know, who? What kind of people? And I want to talk to you about that. Before I do, but let me say this. Earlier uh, today, you know, like when Mike and I, uh, we, we get, you know, we start the day off and we're coming down, and that's my partner. And, you know, we did this together. And uh, when it was just he and I had sitting at a table at Jason's Deli going, man, let's do this. We'd be crazy not to do this ourselves. But I never cared to own the company or anything. I just wanted this to exist. This is the company I wanted to join, but it didn't exist. I was, I was happy being a networker, but, you know, now i got a job. <laughs> at least I'm not just over broke, though. So... I right, look, get good at something worth getting good at. All right, this is a career, and it, it's a great career. But uh, so Mike and I come down, and then we introduce you to uh, Dan Stamen, you know, who we chose to be our first CEO and get the company on a solid foundation. And then we introduce you to John and Eddie and, and those guys working in tandem to be the foundation of the company. And, uh, but in that time, you know, I really felt like, God, you know, I'd love to bring up Mark Asetta. Because he's right there. And so often he plays this role where we're so corporate. And he's kind of in between, you know, where he's like corporate, but he's always with you folks all over the world. You know, him and Monaco, his family, Kelly, the kids. I mean, they are just so foundational to our company. And so let's give it up to Mark Asetta one more time. You know, absolutely. He had a, you know, Mark had a dream. Mark had a vision. And, he, and what he does is so unique and so special. You know, God bless him. And we're, we're so blessed to have him. Now, I do. I want to kind of just give you a sense of, you know, where the dream started for me. And, and obviously, uh, your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. So if this is my outer world. Where did that first start in my inner world? And so I have to go back a few years and just, just give you the history, give you some story. Uh, when I was in high school, um, you know, I had, a, I had my best friend in high school, Lito Porto. Lito Elio Porto. His dad was from Barranquilla, Colombia. And really poor. He, they, but he made good grades. He became a brain surgeon, a neurologist. And, uh, and so we were going to a private Catholic school here in Fort Worth. Do I have a clicker? Uh, they didn't give me one or I ran off without it. <laughs> so I'm going to need help with my slides here. Okay. So this is my buddy Letho. And, uh, and cool dude. I mean, just a creative, intellectual, spiritual guy. I mean, uh, uh, his dad and his mom, I mean, him being a brain surgeon and his mom traveling around the world, learning how to cook, all these different things. So I'd go to their house and there'd be all this world music playing and there'd be foods from around the world. And just the hours that would go by of us just hanging out in the kitchen or doing whatever. And the, it was just so much love and it was so interesting. And so I feel really blessed um, you know, to have my mom who's here and raising me and sending me to Catholic school or, or parochial schools and having God in my life. I, I appreciate my dad for teaching me business and entrepreneurship. I appreciate them in, in, in planting that travel bug inside of me. And uh, I would I'd go to his house and, and stuff from all over the world and in his room. I mean, there's stuff just laying everywhere that was just so neato. I mean, just stuff from all over the world. I had to work in Molans and, and all this all summer, but all summer he was traveling around the world and had stuff from all over the world. You'd go to his closets 
and they would open up, and there'd be just shelves of stuff from the Amazon and all over. And I go and you go over here, and there's stuff from Siberia and all this. I mean, just crazy. It was just cool, and uh, I was just so fascinated. And of course, I joined the Marine Corps. Hoorah. And for all the right reasons, to serve my country and with all the ideals uh, and, 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 and be a good Marine. And I was lay leader and I prayed over uh, the Marines. And, um, and, and so maintaining that spiritual side. And then, <sighs> but then after the Marine Corps, when you're transitioning, I didn't want to have a family in the Marine Corps. I mean, you don't know if you're going to make it. You don't know what that would do to your wife and kids. I mean, it's like, God bless the soldiers that do that, right? And and, and, and I'll tell you this. Hey, not only, not only our soldiers, not only our soldiers, not only American soldiers, the same is true of soldiers around the world. Because it, it certainly would be better if, if we could all just get along. And I, I promise, that, that's a big part of World Ventures for me. That I like that we're becoming friends from around the world. And I don't want to fight with you. <laughs> I just want to love you. I, I want to I go eat and drink with you. <laughs> I want our kids to grow up and speak all these languages, you know? So, but, you know, stuff happens. It's just sad that that's the world we live in. But, I, I, you know, there is that real world, and I don't know if we're going to change that one. But let's, let's have our world. So if you have me go to the next slide, when I come out of the Marine Corps and I'm trying to decide what to do with my life and be a businessman, I got buddies that are working and spending their money on cars and stereos and clothes and going out. I'm rat holing my money and uh, build some snow cone stands. And I don't know nothing about construction. But, you know, I started building these snow cone stands in Lido's yard, you know, and then we were in a dock, you know, and his dad tells us we got to go to a dock and all this. And, but that was a little business venture. And, uh, but that told me, you know, doing that, I had one snow cone stand and then a second one and a third one. And right here in the stockyards where they run the cattle, and there's all that down there. I used to have a snow cone stand down there for big events. And because uh, I grew up here, you know, and... Uh, it gets hot. <laughs> People need a snow cone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so golly, this goes back away. There's Lito Porto, you know, uh, my buddy, and there's one of the snow cone stands. But that taught me I don't need a boss and I don't need a job. I can own even a little business. But that little business right there made more money than a lot of the credible, respected franchises like Subway Sandwich Shops and Mailbox, et cetera, the number one food rated franchise, the number one non-food rated franchise. My little snow cone stands made more, more money than those. Of course, it wasn't as credible. It wasn't as respected. It, wasn't, it made more money, though. <laughs> so right there, you're starting to run counterculture a little bit. Ah, thank you, sir. Now, I, I just had to take a picture of this. And this, I took this, you know, all these years ago. <laughs> when you're young, I mean, you know, we're doing really good with the youth all over the world. There's record unemployment in Greece and, and, and other parts of the world. And... Uh, you know, when they don't have the degree or they don't have the skills, they're thinking, what do I do with my life? And like, that's it. And I'll tell you what I've learned through the years. Uh, you know, I'm not better than anybody, but nobody's better than me either. And, 
and I recruit anybody. If, if somebody's got a gleam in their eye and the kick in the step like Matt Morris did when he was waiting tables, I get to see the fire in his belly. That's who I want to recruit. You show me somebody who's good at anything, and I believe they'll be good at anything. And when Matt, when Matt was that good, hard-working waiter, look, look at him today. Same guy. Doesn't matter he was a waiter then, and, and he's IMD, working on triple IMD or quadruple IMD, I'm not sure which. But he's up there. And same guy, though. And uh, so we're all equal. And man, woman, old, young, black, white, college degree, college, no college degree, it doesn't matter. We're all equal. We just, some of us just know stuff. I, you know what I mean? The, you know, yes. But you're on the path. You're here. You're learning more about our company. You're learning more about our industry, the history of our industry. You're learning how to do this. And, uh, and that's a great thing. Now, when you're, when you're a kid and they ask you, when you grow up, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> well, I ain't grown up yet. <laughs> Susan always says, grow up. And I'm like, grow down. <laughs> when you, can we agree? Can we agree that when people ask you, when you grow up, what do you want to do for a living? And a lot of times as a kid, we go, I want to be a policeman. I want to be a fireman. I want to be a, uh, a, I want to be a, a, a teacher or a principal. I want to be a doctor. Yes, yeah, Troy Brown. He's coming for you. <laughs> I want to be a nurse. I want to be a lawyer. Zena. Army. Randy Bowles. Navy. Look at Jefferson. Air Force. And Marines. We'll be a fighter for one. Look at J Peso. Julio. Working at the hotel. Real estate. Robin Kim Campbell. Accounting and business. Dwight Hanson, a pilot for American. Fadia, flight attendant. Aren't these all jobs that we look up to and respect and say, I want to be that when I grow up? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me go back through this. Do me a favor and please welcome to stage these people I just showed and more. Come on up, guys. I want to talk to you about these jobs. I want to talk about these careers. Light up, light up. Look, 
When they ask you, when you grow up, what do you want to be? Usually this is what comes to mind. A police officer, fireman, teacher, military, construction, real estate, pilot. Did, did any of you ever say, I want to be a network marketer? You, you get this instantly, don't you? And you can, you can appreciate and respect not only these people, but the job that they're doing. These, these jobs, not only, not only from our people here, but these jobs that they represent are important jobs done by important people, credible people, honorable people. Honorable people doing this honorable job. That, that makes our society work, that makes the world work. Now, why is it that at some point in their life, they said, this is what I want to do? And these aren't, these aren't, this isn't Halloween, these aren't costumes. These are, these, are, these are the real people that had these real jobs, that had these real careers. I, can, I mean, I'm, I consider myself blessed to know you as people and friends. And you are making a difference in the world. And I want to show everybody here uh, the house that you've built. Hello friends, welcome to our new corporate headquarters here in Plano, Texas. And from right here, we plan on serving you as you go about having more fun in your life, creating more freedom in your life, creating more fulfillment in your life. We started this company back in 2005. And Wayne and I, we met at Jason's Deli in Irving, Texas. We came together, we had a very small staff, I think maybe 10 people when we started the company and we were in this little executive suite office. And then as we continued to work together and grow together, we moved another office and then another office and we got thousands of square feet and then 10,000 square feet. The space that we're in now, it's 40,000 square foot office. It was so big when we first moved in, we thought, wow, we're never gonna outgrow this and we're, we're doing it. And now we've got 100,000 square feet. That's how fast we're growing. It is a perfect symbol for the success that we as a company are experiencing, validation to every stakeholder of World Ventures that this is happening. I'm standing in the new building here, and one of the exciting things about this building in particular for me is the openness of it. It takes people to keep the people of World Ventures empowered, and making sure that we actually have a home that can sustain our growth into the foreseeable future was an imperative for us. We're still under construction, as you can see, but I wanted to give you a quick tour of kind of some of the things that are here on the first floor. You can see here that we have an expanded customer service area. We've also got a training room that is on the far end that we can house 15 people in so that as we bring on new people, we can train them. We enter here, we're in the new game room, place for all the employees to hang out together and get to know each other. We'll have our ping pong table and our pool table set up. Now we're entering into our genealogy and compliance area. On the far side, we'll have our IT area and then all of our attorneys in the offices up against the back wall. And this is gonna be a store, so we can have all kinds of Good World Ventures gear. All right, let's see. Ah, over here. Now this is gonna be our presentation room. We do meetings on Tuesday nights and Thursday nights and Saturday trainings maybe. When people come in the front doors, they're gonna see all of our signs up here that say World Ventures and Rovia. You'll see this view. I like the water. I get excited for our people. Be able to go out there and kind of picnic with the ducks and go fishing and we're gonna have all kinds of good parties out on the lawn and it's exciting. It's a little bit of nature. Nice running trail and biking trail. And maybe people will work late for you. <laughs> this is pretty amazing. Like that whole wall goes away. 
And look at all this. New building, new furniture. Wow. Okay. I mean, if you get the dimensions and you see, you know, just how far this goes in all the offices, I mean, you get a sense of how many people are here to work for you. It really is amazing. If we just continue to walk around, it's like this on every floor. This, I mean, this is big. What does this building mean both to the company and to you as a representative? For the company, it's that next step. And I think for the representative from your perspective, it's that state of permanency. It's the stability that you're looking for. People like to see the brick and mortar. And when you're showing a prospect, when they see this facility, four stories, a lot of square footage, will eventually hold almost 400 employees. It's something that you can be proud of to point to. And I'm excited for those that are involved in World Ventures that they've got a place that they can show people, they can point to, even if it's just a video on a website, that they can say, wow. Because the power of somebody walking into a building and seeing this is real is uh, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. We plan on leaving a legacy, building something that stands the test of time. So I promise you, we think big, we think long term, we want this to be a business that is generational for you, for your kids and your grandkids. It's exciting. We have an open door policy. We love you. We'd love to see you next time you're in town. We miss you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> this is uh, John Marshall. He's, 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 one, he's one of our friends. He, he recently passed away. Wife Cindy, um, he, he saw World Ventures and he believed in it. And uh, good man, good man, made a difference in the community. And our company was blessed to have him. And uh, I don't know, the way I feel about these folks, they don't pass away. I believe he's still here with us. So, I want to thank him for his service, you know, and his friendship. Uh, when I, uh, that's the thing, we're only here for a little while. I remember with my friend Lito, out in front of his house, uh, he lived on a cul-de-sac, and uh, he and I, we go out and we're just laying in the street, and we're, we're laying on our backs and we're just talking about life. And, the meaning of life and what we're going to do in life. And we're looking up at the night sky. And as we talk about, you know, the serious stuff, it starts to sprinkle. And us being the way we were, we just lay there as it sprinkled and just feel it on our faces. And we continue the conversation. And we don't, neither one of us want to get up. And it starts to rain harder. It starts to rain more. And <laughs> we just still lay there. And, and, and we're talking and we're giggling. And just soaking it up. And as it really starts to rain more, and you feel it faster and faster, we stand up. And as we look at where we were just laying, we see our, our, our body like imprints, where it's dry, where it was dry, and it's wet all around, the, and the pavement had turned dark, and you could just see our, our like perfect bodies where we were laying. And then we just stood there and watched as that rain came down and filled in where we'd been laying. And it was, it was just surreal. And when I think about that memory, and we talk about it often, it was so impactful. It was a metaphor of how, you know, we are here for a little while. It, it, it reminds me of when your casket goes in that ground and they start throwing dirt on there and pretty soon you disappear and you're gone. And you do, you just, you fade away. So we're here for a little bit. And I think we're building something together, something important. 
something that I believe is going to outlast me, and I hope you feel the same way. Thank you.